In the first three Daytona 500s, a pattern had developed that had Glenn Fireball Roberts concerned. He qualified well, ran well, but just couldn't finish. I just can't win the big one here, he said, after leading for 145 straight laps in 1961, but retiring 13 laps short of the checker when his oil pan was punctured in a freak mishap. In 1962, he had once more won the pole and was the fastest qualifier. If nothing went wrong this time, once again, Fireball was the man to beat. The powerful Pontiacs took the top five positions, but for the first time in the Daytona 500, there were more Fords than anything else. The pace car gets out of their way. And the race is on. Coming into the backstretch, Joe Weatherly moved from the second row into first position. The race got off to a wild start. Joe Weatherly started fourth, but jumped out in front right away. Weatherly, Fireball, Junior Johnson, and Cotton Owens all led at times in the first 25 laps. Roberts and Johnson lapped the field and took off. The two of them skirmished all afternoon until Junior's engine went. End of lap one, and the field begins to string out. number 22 Pontiac and Junior Johnson number 27 Pontiac slip past Weatherly and start to put some daylight between themselves and the traffic. Coming out of the back stretch, Johnson passes Robert. The leaders are lapping the field. Starting next to Roberts in the first row was 1960 NASCAR Rookie of the Year David Pearson, his third appearance in the Great American Race. Making his debut was a young driver named Cale Yarborough. He lasted only four laps, but would go on to better things. And Daytona was starting to attract interest from drivers in other series. The legendary Dan Gurney qualified seventh, but dropped out two-thirds of the way through with engine trouble. Others would follow with occasionally spectacular results. Robert number 22 passes Johnson. What a battle! Uh oh, trouble in the back stretch. Robert is still charging at 156 miles per hour. Even 155 miles per hour isn't good enough today. Roberts and Johnson are still 1-2. Richard Petty, who started in 10th position, has moved up to third, a quarter of a lap behind the leader. Richard Petty was back in the race in 1962 in a Plymouth prepared by his father, Lee. When Roberts pitted, Richard jumped into the lead, a pattern that would repeat itself throughout the race. The number 22 Pontiac was faster, and Fireball regained the lead each time with relative ease. before Fireball comes around. Not quite, but as Fireball left puts it down the straightaway, Petty charges out right on his tailpipe. With 50 laps to go, Fireball Roberts had the lead, and if his car lasted, he would finally get to raise the Harley J. Earl Trophy. He made his final pit stop, then blew by Petty to reclaim the lead. Pop signals first place. But Fireball is turning laps at 157 miles per hour, breaking every track record with a magnificent exhibition of car handling. With only 70 miles to go, Petty makes his fourth pit stop. Setting a pace of 158 miles per hour, Fireball barrels down the straightaway to take the lead again. Petty tears out of the pit after him, a half lap behind. Fireball pours it on, and Unique and the crew can only wait it out. 
the crowd is on its feet. 20 laps to go, and Fireball, with a lead of only 40 seconds, is coming into the pits. Suddenly, with 50 miles left, it looked like Fireball would be snake bit again. Fireball's torrid pace has burned up his fuel supply. 10 seconds. Can Richard get around in time? 16 seconds. And Fireball's out and away. Still ahead of Petty, a quarter of a mile ahead. The quick work by his pit crew kept Roberts in the lead. The race would soon be his. Fireball stretches his lead to 27 seconds. Six laps to go. wheels into the winner's circle. 500 miles at an average speed of 152.9 miles an hour. An amazing achievement for driver, car, and equipment. So on February 18, 1962, the only time in his career when he went the full 500 miles, local hero Fireball Roberts finally won the Daytona 500.